How's it going everyone? Mitchell with another Logic Pro 9 tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to be talking about busing and auxiliary. Now, as you probably already know, I already have a busing and auxiliary tracks tutorial. That's right, so I'm going to make this part one because I'm going to be going over examples and exactly what busing and auxiliary is. And in the next one we're going to dive into Logic and do a step-by-step -step of how we can get that done. Right? So let's start. Imagine a song. The song only has five tracks. Kit, guitar, bass, vocals, and piano, and synth. As you can see visualized here. Then there's an output. Okay, We're going to be visualizing sound and volume throughout the rest of this tutorial as a flow of water. So we're going to have our spouts and we're going to have our water flowing into these tracks. By default, the output of these tracks are going to be sent to the stereo output of our song, of our logic project, whatever, okay? And that's going to be sent to our speakers, okay? So in a normal audio flow, this is what's going on, okay? Without any busing, without any auxiliary. This is just as reference so that we, when we get into busing right now, you know what's going on, right? So first type of busing I want to talk about is the output bus, all right? So every track has an input and an output. By default, this bass track has an output to the stereo output, which you can visualize, visually see right here. Instead of being sent to that output, we're going to make it a bus line. That bus, line's in, uh, that bus line is going to create an auxiliary track with an input of that bus. Okay? So what this is effectively doing is creating another stop for this water along the way. You can do uh, anything you want here. You can do EQ, compression, you could just leave it for volume, submixing. I don't care what you want to do with this. Just know that this is what happens when you create an output, output bus. All right? It's going to be connected by bus line and it's going to be just like another junction to the flow like I was talking about. Now if we were to jump into logic, we can see that there is a row of output. Um, in this specific example, and I can, as you can see, that I've already sent some all of these tracks to particular buses, right? And I'm going to be submixing with these. So my drums are going to be sent to bus one, vocals to two, pianos and synth to five, uh, vocals to three, and bass to four. As you can see across this line, okay? And what's just it's, I just changed it so that I can have this audio going through another spot before it gets slammed into our stereo output. Okay, so the next type of bus I want to talk about is the effect bus. And this is going to be different because we are not going to be putting it in line. It's going to be in parallel, okay? What I mean by parallel is we're going to have another offshoot from our bass track that is going to be sent to our auxiliary track. So now this bass track has two outputs, one to the auxiliary track and one to the main output. And this is what's going to be called a parallel bus, all right? And if you've ever heard of parallel compression, parallel reverb delay, uh, this is all how you get that effect, okay? And by default, this auxiliary track's output is going to be set to the stereo output, so it just sends it right back, okay? So that is the effect bus. And what's cool is, okay, so it's a bus line, and now we have two inputs to our output. Yeah, okay. What's cool is that we can select how much volume, how much how much of that original track to send to our auxiliary track by a send volume knob, okay? And we can visualize that by, if you want to send more, you can increase the pipe that that water is flowing through. Um, and increase and decrease, that's how much send is going to this auxiliary track, okay? And if we were to look into logic here, you can see our sends row on our mixer. And this is where we can create those bus those bus lines to our auxiliary tracks, okay? And in this specific example, I have uh, three, just, just only three, just bus 10, and that's going to be our vocals, and it's just going to be a parallel reverb like I was talking about before, okay? And you can see the little knob to the right of it, that's the send, how much, how thick that pipe is, how much water we are going to be sending to that auxiliary track, okay? Um, now, if we were to look at our auxiliary tracks, you can see that specifically uh, bus 2, which was the output bus of my vocals, uh, is being picked up by this vocal submix auxiliary track to the far right. And then to the left of it, vocal effects track, the input is bus 10. And if you remembered from the previous slide, uh, the effect bus on my vocals was bus 10 as an output. So it's being sent to this vocal effects, which just has a space designer, which is just reverb. And then the output is being sent back to bus 2. And this starts to get kind of complicated, especially if you have parallel compression, parallel reverb, 
uh, parallel delay, and then you have your submixes. Uh, if you want to do some stereo imaging, it just gets, it, you can have very long lines of audio flow in your project, and all you have to do to make it simpler is just follow the flow of sound from input to output at every stage, okay? That's all I really want to show here. Okay, we'll get into more about that in the next tutorial, which I will link at the end, by the way, okay. So, finally, I want to go back to our previous, our first example, okay? So we have these five tracks, kit, guitar, bass, vocals, pianos, and synth. All right? Now, okay, if you're paying attention, if we were to create a line from the bottom of the box, that's an output bus. If you were to create a line from the side of the box, that's an effect bus, okay? So that when I have this first level hooked up, we can understand it a little bit more, okay? So the output are going to be going to the master channels, um, if you don't know how to do parallel compression, this might be a little confusing, but basically you're just going to have a, an auxiliary track for very large compression, and then an auxiliary track for uh, your master, okay? And then you just mix those two together, volume-wise, however much you want uh, to get a nice full sound. Okay, so that's what's going on here. For the guitar, I have parallel compression and reverb, and for vocals, I have parallel compression, reverb, and delay on the same auxiliary track. Uh, you can split that up and have two auxiliary tracks, so you have four in total. Um, I just did it to consolidate. Okay, so that's what's going on in our first level. Then what I'm doing is I'm combining everything, I'm kind of boiling everything down into a submix. So I'm going to have a drum submix, guitars, bass, vocals, and pianos, and synth. All right, and this doesn't make much sense because there's five tracks, and we start out with five tracks. But in reality, you're going to have multiple kit, multiple tracks for your drum kit, multiple tracks for guitar, bass, vocals, pianos, and synth, all right? So they're all going to be sent to these uh, first level, first tier auxiliary tracks, parallel compression, delay, reverb, stuff like that. And then they're going to be bussed down to your submixes. And in this case, you only have five. So you only have to mix five tracks instead of 25, 30, 35, however many tracks you have on your song which is really really nice feature okay and then what's going to happen is those sub mixes are just going to send it to our output output speakers all right so this is just an example of maybe some uh, a flow an example of how the sound is going to flow through your um, digital audio workstation right logic okay um, yeah I'm going to be going over a lot more of this in the next tutorial and I'm going to actually be showing you how to do this uh, so stay tuned go click and get to that next tutorial uh, it is an older tutorial, so take it easy on me. I was kind of a noob back then, so uh, still am. But anyway, guys, peace out. Comment, rate, subscribe like a freaking boss, and I'll see you later.